Good morning, welcome to another episode of Tough Talk. Today's conversation is regarding an article by OK Magazine that came out um, mid last month discussing the African Global Economic and Development Summit that took place um, in the University of Southern California and Los Angeles. Um, the conference intentions was to host an event where business leaders from Africa and the United, United States could gather and discuss, um, discuss economic strategies. This year's turnout was remarkably remarkably noticeable because there was no African people in attendance. Um, in previous years, around 40% of the delegates were denied visas, and this year no visas were granted um, in the days leading to the summit. So my question here today is why would an event be hosted and discuss, to discuss African strategies without any Africans in attendance? I think to begin with, we need to establish that this was mostly a business summit. Mm. And for that, the, Amer um, the Americans are mostly looking at their own self-interest. And they don't need the Africans to decide their own self-interest, just as we don't need them to decide what our self-interest is. And to add on with the charged political climate in the US, um, there's a new culture of fear, of prejudice, discrimination against people of a different race, and just may not be overtly visible, but uh, when you see the actual results, you could notice that there are not as many visas being granted, period. And as such, this is just another domino effect of the whole racial discrimination priority and just what's happening in the world right now. Steve? Yeah, you see how I see it, it's like this. Uh, I really don't uh, condone uh, in a form of disrespect mm. to Africa, irrespective of economic or uh, social political uh, uh, sense. But then we have to consider that um, most of Africa's agenda being set outside of Africa, mm. which is a potential problem. So um, investors who, like now the economic agenda of Africa is set outside of Africa. Yeah. Africa economy is, is not being managed by Africans technically. So if we are discussing economic forum in Africa's eco uh, economy is managed by outside forces, then it only makes sense that economic summit about Africa be uh, 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 managed outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. Coupled with what uh, um, um, Jeremy just mentioned, uh, America, Donald Trump was clear about his migration policy. Yeah. So, and I think that came into factor Historically, like you said, about 40% of delegates have attended the event. So there has been a huge denial rate. Mm. So if you were to factor that into Donald Trump's uh, um, immigration policy, then it makes sense that Africans were denied visa to attend this program mm. or uh, event. Regarding a conference that is discussing Africa's economy, why wasn't it hosted within the continent itself? Because in previous years, there was a deny of 40% visas where people weren't able to go, and this year, there was denied of visas altogether. So um, going on in the future, shouldn't the um, creators of this event possibly host the events within an African country where they know an African rep a large amount of African representation will be around? Um, first of all, um, the ideal situation would be that you would have the economic summit hosted in a different country every year mm. that each are part of the summit. Yeah. That's the ideal situation. That being said, the one thing all these African countries have in common is they want to do business with America, which means that we'll have to make some uh, compromises. Mm. So the compromise I think would be best would be hosting it in one African country one year and moving into the yes, the next, and then a different African country one year. That's the ideal situation. But where we are at now is um, as Africans we are the mindset that where we are the weaker party we're negotiating from a point of weakness mm. and therefore we have to defer to the more powerful country but that in itself is not what we're supposed to do yeah we are supposed to band together and create a good economic climate in Africa within mm. ourselves and then neg negotiate outward from there yeah so that's what I think is a problem. So we should stop um, depending on outside forces to strengthen our economy when within our own continents and within our own countries we're able to do these things if we work collaboratively, 
work together. Yeah. yeah. Because I think that once we start seeing lines on a page mm. as barriers, yeah. and we start dividing our country on lines that we didn't create, we start to see each other as competition for the favor of the United States of America. And that's not what we are. Yeah. Or it's what we shouldn't be. We should be, view ourselves as partners. When one of us does well, we, we all do other. well, yeah. And we left, left a place that's been so used up mm. and create something new from it. Yeah, How about you, Steve? Yeah, that's a beautiful point. And what Africa has to do is to shift our mindset and considering this uh, uh, um, um, summit, like we should take ownership of it. It is not about it's a right to be held in Africa mm. or outside of Africa. We should have control over this summit. That's the first thing. And I think Africa has so much to offer to the world that we can take control of our own uh, our activities. Yeah. Every spirit, regardless of what aspect of our society we are talking about, what the economic, social, and everything possible. So a shift from, you know, being led to assuming leadership mm. of our own is the best way for us. So I wouldn't question uh, the issue of whether it was held in Africa or not. My advocacy would be taking control of ourselves. Mm. Um, I think my biggest problem with this whole conference was the fact that we have been misrepresent, misrepresented once again. Because we look at history, it's, this has been going on um, from um, the day of colonization, where the continent got divided into parts and everybody within the West chose where they wanted to rule. And you look at within the media at the moment, why beauty has been the standard of beauty for such a long time, where our voices have not really been heard for centuries and decades. And my question now is, what are your thoughts on how to move forward, allowing collaboration between two different continents and how best we can work collaborate, collaboratively together? And like you said, Jeremy, we as Africans need to bind together instead of depending so much on the West. Can you elaborate on that more? Um, first of all, what I'd like to think happened mm. is that the summit was run by a private enterprise yeah. who do not control what the immigration does. Mm. That's what I'd like to think. But if it was run by the government and then they did have control over the immigration, then that's a whole different problem. Yeah. But moving forward, we need to, we need to play the game smarter. Yeah. We just need to be able to look at the resources we have. We have the raw materials that all the other continents in the world need. Yeah. We are the beginning of any business enterprise that aims to be large. Mm. And we need to take ownership of that. We need to start saying that we're going to develop insight, we're going to develop education, we're going to get the people to do the things we need, and then only then will we offer you what we want to offer you. But at the moment, it's all about how their um, outside forces come in, take control of these resources, tell us that they're the ones who have the actual knowledge to develop these resources. When in fact knowledge is free, mm. we can all do this. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, and I think we we need sort of a radical sweeping approach to how we handle our business mm. now. So, like I said before, we need control in order to collaborate with people. We should put ourselves within a powerful position to make meaningful contribution and determination of whatever rules and agenda that will govern our partnership. Yeah. But for now, it's not the case our partnership and every collaboration with uh, 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 the West or Asia and every uh, dominant economic force for that matter tends to be determined by them, mm. for us. You know, yeah. We just tend to play by the rules. So we need that sort of radical approach. Mm. And uh, 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 taking on from Jeremy's point, we have the natural resources, the raw materials. So take, for example, now, we live in the uh, information era, yeah. the era of technology. And then cotton comes from Congo one of the biggest uh, producers of cotton in the world. So then, do you see how powerful we can then be in determining you know, aspects of this mm. industry, yeah. which is the biggest thing now? And we have this raw material that is needed to produce in the computer, phone, and everything else. So then we have a significant role. But what we don't understand now, or we are not appreciating, is how can we make ourselves a dominant player as mm. well? We are always... Uh, we, 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 we sort of underestimate our, our potential yeah. and credentials. So just a radical realization of that is very important in the way forward. Mm -hmm. Unless we do that, the world's going to keep uh, setting the agenda and then we're going to keep playing uh, uh, to the rules. 
at our own disadvantage and for their advantage. Okay. Um. This is this question is going to be completely off top off top off topic, but um, in regards to what you both said that we um, need to strengthen our forces and work together in order to um, have a stronger um, economic relationship within ourselves and also outside of the continent. I mean, saying that, what does that say about our politicians? Because when you look, a lot of these business deals are being made within our, politi our politicians. They're the one agreeing to this. So for those of us who have had the privilege of growing up outside the continent, isn't it our responsibility to necessarily take our knowledge and go back and develop the country? Because we can't sit here and complain about the corruption going on back home, and yet we're just sitting here in a privileged world, doing, doing as we please and not really influencing the change that we want to see. Um, coming to a different country in order to get educated. Mm. It's one of the biggest problems I've seen. Yeah. We go to another country, we get educated, but we fall in love with the lifestyle. That's because, first of all, Africa is young. Mm. You need to understand, almost no African country is older than 100 years old. Yeah. Whereas Australia has been here a while, formally and informally. Yeah. As well as America is almost more than 200 years old. Mm -hmm. They are at a different point in their timeline than we are. Yeah. But then we just want to jump the timeline and just go to a place where it's safer. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is our responsibility to go back and help out, but only when we are ready. At this moment in time, if I was to go back after finishing one degree, mm. I would not make any impact. No, definitely. But if I was to say, work hard, stay here, find a good job, learn how business is done here, yeah. and apply it back home mm. later on in life with investments, with knowledge, with partnerships. Yeah. That's how we can change it. Mm. And I definitely yeah. agree with that. Steve? Yeah. I think that's a beautiful question, but one thing that stands out to me is um, the, the politics in Africa, mm. African politicians. I'm thinking they're the biggest waste of time. On that, like <laughs> yes. African Content. presidents yeah. and politicians, they are the biggest waste of time. And then what it brings to my mind again is like a radical approach. Mm. How can we challenge our politicians? Yeah. Why do we even vote? vote people, for these people when, we yeah. don't serve our best interest in yeah. the first place we have to question that mm. we vote idiots into power our, our power and then we are surprised and shocked why you know they do what they do yeah. but we should be surprised of ourselves and ashamed of yeah. ourselves by putting them into power and mm. two um what comes to mind as well is why do we come to the west not that we, we come to learn, but sometimes we come with a different mentality, conditional mindset, yeah. which in most cases uh, looks down upon Africa. Yeah. So we have to change that as well. We have yeah. to see our being here as, like seeing ourselves as critical mm. to the redevelopment of Africa rather than coming to Australia with a negative mindset towards Africa. Africa yeah. And so that's what I tell most people now, like, some people want to establish business or businesses in Australia in, in the West. But take for example, it's so structured. There's so many structural industries and regulations mm. in place that you may not even have the opportunity to break through. But Africa is developing. Africa is under construction. Yeah. There are not many industries in Africa. It's so much of a virgin land yeah. that you could do so much. Much more, yes. So definitely. what can we governize our intelligence? our resources, and my you, Africa doesn't need the money. Mm. So some people say, oh, I need to invest in Africa and look for money. Yeah, it is fine to have money to sustain yourself, but Africa have enough money. What to need is the, the intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think that's why uh, our shift in our mindset, gearing towards that, will take us further. Mm. That being said, us being here doesn't mean we're doing nothing. Yeah. Um, there's a perception in the West that um, we are second class mm. and the only way you can change that is by going to them and showing them who we are yes yes definitely. so coming here we need to um having them look at us and regard us as intelligent human beings who are responsible and can make decisions for ourselves is another form of change mm. we need to change our own mindsets we need to change their mindsets and we need to work together to be all as equal yeah can i disagree, Do you disagree? A bit? <laughs> yeah can i disagree a little bit it is not about how the West perceive you. You see, that's the thing. It is not about their perception of you. It's about what you can do. So, are you concerned about proving to people what you can, what you are capable of, or are you concerned about proving to yourself or doing what you are capable of? So, if we come to the West to showcase our talent to the West, and then go back to Africa to execute that, sometimes like okay, 
in practical sense, it hasn't happened, it hasn't translated. Mm. We come to the West and we get stuck up here, and we even accept being a second class citizen. Yeah. We appreciate that even more. Yeah. So if within the process of showcasing our talent, this is mm. something we appreciate and we don't get to actually achieve yeah. what we have come to showcase or take it back to Africa. So then it gets complicated. Mm. Yeah. In reality, it doesn't work. And I will go for, if we are capable of uh, um, taking developing Africa, let's go ahead and do it. Yeah. We don't need to prove that to anyone else. Yes. The responsibility is um, is all to ourselves, yeah. not anyone else. Yeah, definitely. My problem with that is um, we start looking at um, the West as the enemy. Mm. And they're different, but that doesn't mean they are adversaries. That doesn't mean that we should fight against them. Mm. We need to regard. We we all want to be equal in this world as yeah. ourselves. We, we as as people who have been subjugated for so long, we will all want to be equal. Yeah. And that demands seeing everyone else as equal as well. Yeah. So once we see them as equal and stop seeing race as well, mm. um, not st- stop seeing race in that we don't acknowledge that we're all different. We're all different. Yeah. But we just need to start thinking as equals. What are we going to do to better this world? Mm. We need to start thinking at the big picture. It's not just about Africa. It's about globalizing everything. Mm. So we start seeing ourselves as humans and everyone has help helping each other. I know it's idealistic. It's probably not going to work. But mm. I think we should try. I was try. just about to tell you that. It's probably not going to work, but I do think we should try. Yeah. Steve, I see you shaking your head. Yeah, okay. Well, how I see it is like, uh, we wouldn't call the worst our enemies, right? But, but we wouldn't call them our friends about, either. Okay, so we cannot call them our friends. Yeah. So what we should call them is better business is partners better described based on history yeah so whichever you form your opinion based on the history so if they have served you well then they are your friends if they haven't served you well it is up to you to decide yeah so i wouldn't go like i wouldn't like you know i'm not sure what they are to us but we have to be careful and issues like globalization we have to sort out our house first yeah like are we a major player within globalization look at china now china is a big player yeah yeah Controls globalization. Mm. So, what about Africa? What are we? So, if we are going to, if we want to participate in this conversation, we should be prepared. And I think there were an uh, unapologetic focus on Africa, something that is radical, fundamental, mm. and is required now because it puts, up, puts us in the position to compete. Mm. But at this stage, we cannot compete. So, then why must we focus on globalization that will only exploit us for the benefit of the big players? Let us focus on empowering ourselves to compete. Mm. So before we conclude this conversation, do you guys have anything else you want to add? Um, at this moment, I think it's uh, important to think about the fact, not that not all of them were uh, permitted to go to the US, but for how many years has it been that 40% have, been, have not gone because of visas? Mm. The, it's not a new problem. It may be bigger now, but yeah. we, need to, we need to realize that this has been happening for a long time and we've been unaware. Mm. So we just need to focus on that aspect as well. Yeah, and educate ourselves yeah. and also do the research to know um, to know what's going on within our own countries and within the economy. Yeah, Steve? Definitely. Now I agree with all Jeremy. I think this is not like a new phenomenon. Mm. This is something that has happened over and over. And then I was, I was shocked because some Africans were shocked, you know, about yeah. this whole thing. It is not new to us. Yes. The West has said the agenda for so long, disrespected Africa for so long. But again, we need to have a different approach. Yeah. Let us now start to look at the cause of the problem rather than the symptoms. Mm. So this even of um, Africans being denied visa for a, a, a summit is more like a symptom. Yeah. The cause is bigger than that. We yeah. should take initiative and address uh, uh, our lack of initiative. Mm. So yes. Yeah, so. F- we should shift our mindset now. It is time for us to shift our mindset. Thank you so much for joining our conversation once again. Um, thank you to our special guest, Jeremy, for um, being here with us. Um, leave a comment down below any of what we've discussed. So if, if you agree or disagree, and we'll see you another time.